я писала дисертації книги про тих, які зв'язані з люди, які пережили якусь травму в психології. І от Катя там його офіс була, спали, я познайомила з людьми в Україні контакти. I'm just saying, those who have less English, you know. So we can start with the chime in any time you need to translate and I'll stop. How can I advance the slides? Should we, uh, how do we advance the slide, Andrew, just uh, by... Uh, just click space yep. is enough, or back, back arrow. Yeah. So, we, we you official or not, oh, and I'll trim it later. Okay. So it's recording. So what, what is the range I have? Just uh, it's, right oh, you, you got from a screen, where's Oleg? It picks uh -huh. up the screen, and the last Today. one is by the collar. Okay. But I don't okay. see... Uh, okay. okay. I'll, I'll be the boundary. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so from from uh, Nikolai to Oleg. Okay. Do we need do, do we need translation? I can go and translate every phrase. It'll be easier. Maybe we should. Yeah. Be, be, Scott, we, we're going to be doing like simultaneous translation then. Okay. That's fine. Like, you know, a couple guys were pretty new, and I want I I want them to get it. So sure. Let's sure. let's let's start whenever you're ready. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, having me here. I'm uh, very um, interested in helping you because um, uh, the, the people uh, in Ukraine and outside Ukraine uh, need uh, support in many, many ways. And so I'm a chiropractor. I've been in a practice for 40 years, 40, going on 41 here in Lincoln. And I'm also a part of the Mental Wellness Society, which is an international organization of 72 countries, including Ukraine. And our mental wellness society member in Ukraine, Viktor Vus, Dr. Vus, um, was informing us from the beginning um, what was happening inside Ukraine. Uh, and our particular focus in this overall relief effort for Ukraine is helping to build mental <coughs> resilience. He would tell us what the need was for people at the moment. And uh, we have support uh, the systems or professionals around the world that would apply their expertise in order to be able to give information and programs that would be helpful um, at the at the time it was needed. With me being a chiropractor, I'm interested in the mind and body connection and helping build strength in both. So since uh, we've been working on this init initiative uh, for Ukraine, um, the, the National Psychological Association of Ukraine has begun a relationship with the Mental Wellness Society to do training in uh, what's called mindful choice. And that's what I'm going to be talking to you about um, for your own stress management as well as uh, helping others that need your help in Ukraine. Розробили таку програму, яку вони назвали Mindful Choice, або, ну, як би це найближче перевести, такий обдуманий вибір, який стосується, як людина може раціонально поводити себе в час великого стресу. Okay, so you can change the slide. <clears throat> so Mindful Choice is a way of using your mind to direct your own health and well-being so that you can become more mentally and physically resilient and help 
others more effectively. Okay, you can move on. So the mindful choice is a simple method. We won't go into great detail, but it's a way of recognizing, um, becoming aware, making choices based upon um, reason over emotion, uh, and then evaluating the process and recirculating that process. That's the uh, mindful choice in a nutshell. Тобто такий круг, він складається з такий процес з чотирьох кроків. Перший процес це коли людина починає розуміти, от розуміти, що стало, що я переживаю зараз. А другий крок, ну, куди я направляю, якщо я розумово, так? Третій людина повинна робити вибір, зробити вибір в такі в такі в такому положенні, який буде ґрунтуватися не на емоційній складові, а на на такому холодному зваженому, холодний зважений вибір, а не вибір, який ґрунтується на емоційній складові. І тоді четвертий пункт це переоцінка, людина дивиться на те, що далі, як які далі кроки. Окей. So there are several purposes for us today, and uh, one of the pr principles of mindful choice is you end up where you look, which means that um, when you can only see the problem, you can't look at the solution. And so being able to adjust your mind by knowing a couple of simple things about using the brain, then you can be more likely to focus on uh, solutions rather than getting lost in the problem. Він каже, от таку думку зараз сказав, що оцей mindful choice, якщо так можна сказати, ще він зв'язаний, він зв'язує, він допомагає людині. Людина, вона завжди в кінці кінців опиниться там, на що вона настроює свій розум. І тому він каже, дуже важливо, коли психологічно розумово людина не віддається 100% проблеми і не потопає в самій тільки проблемі, а все ж таки настроює, розуміє, що повинен бути якийсь вихід, повинен бути якісь кроки. We'll cover these other points in the rest of our program, so you can move on to the next slide. And there's a few other points here, but we'll go over those together. So you can go on to the next slide. Okay, so when you go over to Ukraine, what is your purpose? When you go over to Ukraine, what is your purpose? When you go over to Ukraine, what is your purpose? When you go over to Ukraine, what is your purpose? To help people on all levels, just to serve them, to share their pain, to make it easier to comfort them. Great. And one of my reasons for being here is for you to be able to do that and manage the stress of the circumstances you'll be going into so that you're not overburdened with stress when you come back. Він каже, буває так навіть, що ті люди, що служать теж, вони оцей, оця вся біда, людська, ці всі переживання, вони настільки захоплює, що це навіть впливає на психологію людини, яка служить, і вона коли ну, не може назад їхати, чи коли їде, вона теж під такий самий вплив попадає ці всі переживання біди. When there's so much externally that a person can't control, then they get sometimes lost in what they can't control and don't understand what they can control. Even simple things that a person can learn to control from within can give them um, greater strength both mentally and physically in order to get through the stress that they're in right now. І навіть каже такі речі, коли людина розуміє сама себе і те, що в ній закладено, і вона використовує це, то вона може зміцнитися на силах і переборювати ці обставини, які 
And then another aspect of this is managing your self-talk. We always talk to ourselves inside our heads. And what we say to ourselves uh, has an impact on our body. If we think the stressful thoughts of the day, then the uh, stressful hormones and chemicals continue to flood our bodies. If we can, go ahead. Кажа, що коли наші думки, вони дуже впливають на наше тіло, і коли ми переповнені оцими стресово поганими думками, вони мають певні гормони на фізичному рівні, які виділяються в організм людини, і ми повинні розуміти, що ось таке мислення, воно впливає на наше тіло, на наше здоров'я і на наш взагалі стан. The simple techniques that we'll go over today are designed to help um, create a situation in the body where the stress isn't continuing to accumulate. Мати розуміти просту таку техніку, чи як сати прості речі, котрі ми можемо робити в цих обставинах, щоб не дозволити тривозі, стресу або переживанні просто піднятися на якийсь дуже супер високий уровень, рівень дуже в житті нашому. And another aspect is uh, managing jet lag because the trip is long and uh, you're going into a situation um, that is stressful and um, you're already tired. And so that makes you a little more vulnerable and a little bit, um, uh, that you, there's a few things that you can know about jet lag that would be help for you to be stronger in the moment. Що він має пару типів, які навіть на рахунок такої простої теми, як перельот на літаку, тому що людина може не усвідомлювати, але коли людина сильно перемучена, виснажена, вона більш вразлива стає. І тяжче тоді цій людині служити людям, коли вона сама така вразлива. Okay, we'll go up to the next slide. So, <clears throat> now, let's um, imagine that you're driving a car, right? So you're the driver in the car. Okay, you got your right foot and you got the accelerator. Okay, okay. so if you push on the accelerator, the, you're making a simple move. The, your mind, you're the mind of the car right now, or the truck. You push the accelerator, and that sets off an automatic change of events in the car. What would happen if your foot stayed on the accelerator uh, would would uh, make the car break down over time because it's not designed to run with a foot to accelerator for a very, very long period of time. So the brain has the accelerator, and it also has a brake. So, бачите, розум машини, якщо ми вже так таку паралель проводимо, він має газ і він має тоже тормоз. The lower part of the brain is the automatic part. That's what operates your body when you don't have to think about it. And lower part, I'm sorry, Scott, is the lower part of the brain. В заді у нас є такий, як називається, нижня частина нашого розуму, вона автоматична є. Це та частина, яка відповідає за функціонування нашого тіла. Ви робите якісь дії, ви не думаєте про них. Автоматично робите. The front part of the brain is the thinking part. Але спереді тут у нас є друга частина розуму, яка відповідає за мислення людини. So the mind can use the thinking brain to tell the automatic brain what to do sometimes. І що, 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 що виходить, що Оцей розумовий центр, який думає, він повинен давати команди автоматичному центру, щоб була зміна якась. Okay, let's go to Okay, so the the we we understand our world by our five senses. І ми розуміємо, сприймаємо наш світ, ми маємо п'ять почуттів таких. Touch, dotyk, sight, бачим, sound, чуємо, uh, tasting, пробуємо на смак, and smelling. Okay, so if, for example, in Ukraine, 
На той колечо в Украине. Someone feels the thunder of the bomb. Кто пережил выбух бомбы. Or sees horrible sights. Або просто побачив якісь жахіття війни. Or hears the repeated gunfire. Або просто чує оті такі перестрілки страшні. Or or smells the fire and tastes the soot. Або от ну нюхає оцей оцей порох, да, так сказати, да, і вогонь. It makes their automatic brain slam on the accelerator. Автоматично ви повинні знати, автоматична частина, оця автоматичний brain наш, він робить те саме, щоб до поліка нажати на газ. If they don't know how to shut that down or switch it to the other part of the brain which be the brake, then they stay stuck in that high acceleration and get sick. Та якщо людина вона ну не знає як переключитися, як і як щоб запрацювала оця частина, то вона може довгий час знаходитися в такому положенні, в кінці кінців вона розбивається ментально і вона навіть хворіє. So the the accelerator, a part of the stress is called fight, flight or freeze. You when you're exposed to a threat, your body wants to fight it or run or freezes. Такі три речі, коли ви коли ви, ну, зустрічаєтеся з небезпекою великою, то є три реакції нашого тіла. Ви хочете або втікати зразу, або битися, протистояти цій небезпеці, або просто людина як як вкопана застигає. And and um, blood pressure increases, uh, heart rate increases. Підіймається тиск крові, кров'яний тиск. What else it is? Blood pressure, heart rate, and blood pressure increases. Blood and energy go to the arms and legs and big muscles. І енергія і вся сила вона йде в великі мускули тіла людини. Your mouth gets dry. Часом Вот пересихає горло. And uh, energy goes away from your gut. І енергія вона від от від тих м'язів, які тримають статуру, вона тоже якби виходить. And yeah, people stuck in that mode, um, not just refugees, but uh, as a volunteer, you're exposed to the stress of the same of this environment. It can happen to you too. І люди з якими це відбувається навіть не обов'язково біженці, це навіть може відбуватися із, із волонтерами, так само вони можуть в такий момент таку таку попасти ситуацію, коли таке така реакція їхнього тіла. The Ukrainian patients that I talk to. Пацієнти um, України, з якими я розмовляв, have frequently told me that the people that they connect with inside Ukraine uh, can't eat. They 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 feel nauseous and uh, this is a reflection of the chronic uh, stress that they're in. І приблизно такі симптоми, вони в основному говорили, що люди втрачають апетит, не можуть їсти. Тошнота приходить, от і вони якби це все результат такого хронічного стресу довго. When you switch to the other part of the nervous system, blood pressure goes down, heart rate goes down, blood goes to the gut and uh, the water in your mouth comes back getting ready for digestion. Але коли ви переключаєтеся з автоматичного цього розуму на на от центральний, який тут знаходиться, то зворотній ефект відбувається, знов нормалізується кров'яний тиск, приплив крові приходить назад в, ну, ви можете твердо стояти, не 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 падаєте з ніг і уповільнюється ритм серця. Okay. You can switch the are there any questions so far? <clears throat> Maybe about tunnel vision. Effect. Okay, well, tunnel vision effect, uh, thank you, is um, part of the stress response in which your your vision narrows so that uh, along with the other things that I mentioned, uh, so you don't see in the periphery only your brain and, and eyes only focus on one thing, but your mind narrows too. It can't think uh, in a broad sense either. Каже, коли от, наприклад, на газ нажимає і дуже скоро їде машина, то е, вона не може, ви не можете використовувати периферійний, е, е, ну, я би сказати, от, того, що не бачите, ви дуже звужується, звужується ваше 
бачення тільки, от, тільки бачите, що перед собою. І подібно люди, які застигають цьому автоматичному е, е, atomic mind, в них е, те саме відбувається. Панел ефект це коли е, їхній розум, оцей автоматичний, він нічого більше не сприймає і нічого більше не бачить. Тільки оце, оцю одну проблему і це одне, що перед очами. Uh, does uh, freeze, run, and fight stay with the personality type, or? Well, if they don't know how to switch out of it, they say. Like, they for example, the person mainly always try to fight something if he's under stress or mm -hmm. try to just black out. Is so it? that's a great question. So the, you have the stress of the threat, and then you have the memory of the stress of the threat. Okay, and if that recurs, then uh, it continues to stay. And there is something called chronic tunnel vision, which is the person who stays in that. But that's what I'm saying, does it evolve from freezing to being, you know, aggressive, start fighting? It can, it can. Uh, it, it, can it can be any of the three, um, and any particular individual. People have a tendency to do one or the other, but if uh, given circumstances, they can they can switch. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let me, let me, uh, this was your question on the action. Uh, Дріс питав, чи це від персоналу, від особистості людини залежить, як вона реагує. Часто кажуть, є там, як там флегматик, такий, сякий. І він каже, що у людини є, наприклад, реакція на стрес, і є ще пам'ять, як він реагував на стрес в минулому. І ця пам'ять, як він реагував на стрес, вона якби формулює особистість людини, якщо знову і знову твоя відповідь на стрес така, то відключається оцей, оцей спосіб мислення, до якого, про який він говорить центрально. So it's not necessary to know exactly how the automatic mind or the brain works. What is important for you to know is how you can have your mind and the thinking brain tell your automatic brain what to do. You see, the Каже, ну, нам не важливо зараз там копатися в тих глибинах, як працює автоматичний брейн людини, розум, да. Но, но важливо знати, що є спосіб, як впливати на нього і виходити з стресу. The lower part of the brain is the, the automatic brain is the doer. And the higher part of the brain is the thinker. And then your mind can, can use the thinking brain to um, tell the automatic brain what to do. І виходить так, що цей дивний наш розум, частина його, вона якби може стати ді дія. Це діюча, дія частина, вона робить. А ця частина, вона думає. І а, ми не хочемо, щоб наш автоматичний розум, він просто робив без думання, але ми маємо навчитися, щоб впливати на ту частину, думаючу частину. So we don't, there are simple techniques that we'll be going over here, uh, here in just a minute. І я хотів би пару таких простих таких технік запропонувати через декілька хвилин. Ones that are important for you to understand and I'll be I'll here to support you and, and helping you understand so that you can help yourself because you have to be strong in order to be able to help others. And then what? Каже, ми маємо розуміти, що ми самі маємо бути сильними, щоб допомогти комусь. І деякі ці поради можуть можуть пригодитися. And then once you can help yourself then you're in a much better position to help others than you. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Now I've got a 90 second video here that I'll show you. And, and uh, on my phone, okay, this is exactly, this is um, what we were talking about as far as tunnel vision, narrow field of vision, focus on the problem, Trouble sleeping, trouble eating, fatigue and exhaustion and stuff. So those are, those are, when you see that in somebody, yourself or somebody else, then uh, there's a good chance that this might be going on. Now this happens in the U.S. too. We have to know that these symptoms, when a person is angry, he says, I can't sleep, I can't eat, I'm tired and I'm tired. Very often this happens as a result of the work of this tunnel vision, when a person who was in a stress moment and she віддалася автоматичному цьому автоматичній частині свого розуму і з периферійного розуму не стало. And the Ukrainian patients that I take care of are terribly stressed about their loved ones in Ukraine. 
І навіть тут я зустрічався з українськими пацієнтами, вони розказували свої переживання за, за їхніх родичів, які там в Україні залишились. Тож не були стреси. Тому навіть і, можливо, комусь і тут це пригодиться. Окей. Okay. So this is on my, this is only 90 seconds and it's on my phone. I don't know if we can try to click on, can Just we do that on there? Yeah. yeah, I think okay. it should be, it should be high probably. Okay. So it's only 90 seconds. Well, what time is the next? The space. Oh, uh, no, it's switched. Okay. I, I wasn't certain that we could click on the PowerPoint program, but. Over there? No. Okay, so um, can I just come into the room here and, and just show it to you? Yeah, maybe we can remove this table right here and make a little entrance. We want to stay in objective too. Oh, yeah. What's that? Oh, we'll, take, we'll go off screen for this. I just want to stand right there and show you guys. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, we can go to the next one. So... I want to be clear, this is not um, um, treating, and you're not responsible to be able to have to treat people. You're there to care for them, and you have to yourself be strong in order to be able to care for them in the best way possible. So this is personal uh, tools that you can use to help yourself and others. What's the difference between caring and treating? Well, treating requires a license and a different kind of, of um, discussion with the person. Right now, they need first aid. And they yeah. need not to uh, go down the, the, the rabbit hole of, of stress that could be, part of it, could be avoided as far as its impact on the body. Appreciate the question. We, 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 we ми не, не, не є якимось там лікарями, чи щоб лікувати можемо людину, але це більше як перша допомога така, як просто дати людині невеличку пораду, що вона може зробити своїм стресом в даний момент, щоб вона не, як він висловився, не попала в диру, цю rabbit hole, це така, як то, знаєш, got stuck. Mm-hmm. Okay, the next slide. So what is vague nerve? The vagus nerve is the main nerve of the break. The, re- the relaxation part, the part that uh, uh, takes the uh, blood away from the arms and legs and uh, moves it to the gut and relaxes the body, the heart and the blood pressure and the pulse rate. So is it, is it, uh, uh, indeed, is it indeed a nerve that's located somewhere in between the body? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the, lo- in the lower brain. It's part of the automatic brain. Oh, well, that's interesting. So it's interesting that in our automatic brain, Оце, що називається vague nerve, він якраз відповідальний за те, що він забирає всю кров з, з нас, наприклад, і ну, звідси і в руки і ноги посилає, і людина застрягає, або коли він розслабляється, то зворотня реакція, і людина знову приходить в нормальний... So the red light is the accelerator, the stress, the sympathetic nervous system. The green light is the vagus nerve and the parasympathetic system. And you can use breathing to influence the vagus nerve, and I'll show you that. Yeah, and this is how we have two nerves in this automatic, automatic movement. One was the was the first the red light. The the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic. The automatic blocks the, 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 the stress. Yeah. The red light. The alarm. The, red light. the alarm. It's located also in the back. In the lower brain. It's part of the automatic brain. What two of these nerves in the automatic movement in our body? The first is the sympathetic, which is holding us. А другий це вейгус норм, який допомагає людині відпустити стрес і вийти з нього. І каже, я зараз, що ми будемо говорити, це такі варіанти прості, якими ми можемо впливати на цей вейгус норм в нашому власному тілі. Thank you. Can you go to the next slide? That's interesting. Okay. Uh, am, I, am I going backwards? Yeah, I'm going backwards. And, uh, okay. So these are the techniques that, uh, that uh, we'll go through to help you. Uh, first, okay? How so, the first is what to think during times of stress. And that technique is first to know that your thinking brain can 
switch your automatic brain to do certain things to get out of chronic stress. І перше, що нам треба пам'ятати з медичної точки зору, ви розумієте, він говорить, це що е, в нас є така частина розуму, яка може повелівати, командувати автоматичному розуму, що йому робити. Не забути треба цього. And these are things you can control. Це те, що ви, це те, що ви можете контролювати, при тому, що так багато всього є, що ви не можете контролювати. And to be able to use the things you can control um, is empowering in a way. І ви знаєте, щоб ну, перше знати і дати можливість цьому думаючому розумі, якби uh, empower, як це сказати, ну, oh, see, oh. Позволити йому це робити, давайте скажемо так. We uh, have to give the things that we can't control up to God. І ми ми мусимо дати ті речі, які ми не можемо контролювати Богу. And uh, and other sure. other people in the uh, that are in different positions. І або людям, які професіонали в тій області, які в мене знають. Leadership. Leader and such such. Yes. Okay. So how to breathe during times of stress? <clears throat> That's the vagus over the belly breathing. So if you're more comfortable, would you like to stay seated while we do this? You tell us what's better. Okay, well, we'll do both. <clears throat> okay, so uh, belly let's, breathing let's... is uh, a way to breathe in through your nose by pushing your belly out. Instead of the chest, the belly out. So you breathe in by your belly going out. And then you breathe out through your mouth with your lips pressed together so you have to force the air out. Okay? When you breathe, when you breathe, the diaphragm, <clears throat> when you breathe in, it goes down. When you breathe out and you force the air through your mouth, it stimulates the vagus nerve, uh-huh. which switches you to the more of the break or the relaxation. <laughs> I think after this seminar we are going to start competing with <laughs> Okay, the reason is we see some of the show the technique of dikanya prosta, colleague that называется it's a belly breathing. Stand up and we'll do it seated too, because you can do it either way. Okay, so most of us are used to breathing in through our nose and, and nose and breathing and expanding the lungs and the chest. Bitch is that dikha and most we носом і грудьми. Бо більшість людей так дихають. Я так прикидую, да, так воно получается. And anything you learn that's new takes a little time. So if it feels awkward at first, it's normal. І каже, I'm sorry, what is that? If it feels awkward to learn this at first, that's normal. Якщо, ну, якщо вам буде странно трошки, що ми зараз будемо це все нормально, не переживайте. Okay. So breathe in through your nose and push your belly out. Through pressed lips, push the belly in and the air out. Now, you could, the first time you do that, first few times, you could get a little lightheaded because that's a switch, you see. Breathe in. Are we supposed to breathe out slowly or just kind of forcefully? Yeah, slowly. Slowly okay. would be best, yeah. Mm-hmm. If it helps you, if it helps you, push, put your hands on your stomach. Breathe in, and then breathe out, and push your stomach in. Now, now try it seated. <laughs> so does anybody feel a little lightheaded after doing that a few times? Because it's pretty I have common. an example. I was just sharing with him. Um, I was asked to share my testimony when I came back from Poland. Uh-huh. And before I went up, I was like feeling very stressed. So I was doing that in my chair before I went up. And that really helped a lot. Oh, good. Yeah. She oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Because <laughs> I read about it online. So I'm just See? sitting there in church. <laughs> so what, what, I, what I'm getting from it, when I go home and my wife asks me to wash dishes, I'm going to be... <laughs> <laughs> right, I love that. So we'll come back to that again a little bit later. Uh, uh, let me say this. So what you understand is that this nerve is Vegas, Vegas, right? Він стимулюється, є певні речі, якими його можна стимулювати, і тоді якби тіло реагує, і цей нормально нормалізуються процеси в тілі. 
Now, when you're in Ukraine, you might not have a chance to teach refugees this. You know, it might not be easy to do. So if the opportunities there, you can, but do it for yourself so that uh, you, you uh, can stay as strong as you can be. Коли ви будете в Україні, можливо, чи в цих місцях може ви не зможете так в школу брати там людей це вчити. Ну, якісь моменти будуть підходящі, що але по крайній мірі для себе відкази ви будете. And if you want, I can send you the video, the two minute video on belly breathing. I can send that to you and you can send it out or anything that you want for me for help, you let me know. I'll, I'll tell you how to do it. Okay, so then the next one is powerful smiling. Even Mother Teresa said, uh, you, we have no idea what the power of a smile is. Mama Teresa, Mata Teresa, when she said that we don't know the power of a smile. So, Andre, if, if I smile at you, that's what you do. You're right. You're right. Uh, you're right. Uh, mirror neurons. <laughs> yeah. See, we're hardwired to mimic the emotions of others. And the thing about a smile is that a smile stimulates the brain to release healthy hormones and chemicals. A smile alone, is, uh, whether it's forced or natural, a big one is, is better. Так створена така генетика в людини, що вона якби повторяє, от, наприклад, тобі усміхнулися і ти, навіть не думаючи, автоматично у відповідь теж так ми якби такі хардвайер. Що він ще сказав цікаво, що навіть чи це ну, саме собою, чи ти над сам заставляєш це автоматично. У відні у відповідь він казав, що не хардвайер, що коли ти комусь успіхаєшся, то так. зазвичай людина не думаючи навіть ага. успіхається у відповідь. За те, що навіть якщо це іскрення, і він на таке на навіть якщо да, навіть чи сам воно... себе застав, да. навіть якщо заставив себе, все рівно позитивні гормони це, це, для хористів це, це треба казати, да. для хористів, для проповідників. Для проповідників. Що з лерін тричалися? It's important for you to understand that it works both ways. When you're when you see someone that isn't smiling, you have to resist to have that mirror that in yourself. Because you can you can walk around a whole group of people that are in this uh, tunnel vision effect uh, chronically and they can't muster a smile. Yeah, but don't you got to you have to be strong and not uh, take that part on. But you can always smile back. And you have to size up the situation and see what kind of smile is going to work. I mean, it would be best. But even a little bit, if you can get a little bit of a smile out of someone that actually helps them switch to the other part of the brain that's healthier for them in their current circumstances. Так, в двох словах, те, що зараз він сказав, каже, що, ну, звичайно, що не в всякому форматі усмішка доречна буває, каже, але навіть коли є можливість для навіть маленької якоїсь усмішки, і ти можеш допомогти цим переключити люди, вивести людину із стану автоматичного тільки розуму, тому що ця усмішка якраз переключає на цей, то if you smile at someone um, and they smile back, that's like giving a person a fish. Yes, like giving a person a fish, as, like food. Oh, okay. If you tell them that if you smile more, you'll help yourself be healthier, you're teaching them to fish. Усміхаєтесь комусь, то те саме, що ви даєте людині там рибину їжу, наприклад, рибу. А якщо ви вчите людину цим принципам, по якій людина буде вже потім це розуміючи і, і осмислено це робити, це те саме, що вчити людину ловити рибу. Okay, and then if you help others teach others, then you're teaching other fishermen to teach other fishermen. Okay, so don't underestimate uh, the power of a smile uh, for yourself. You can actually teach your families this too. Now, 
How to shift breathing and muscle tension during times of extreme stress is that uh, one of the one of the stress responses is tense muscles in arms, oh, legs, back. Ще 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 одна така якби ну симптом великих стресів це коли напрягаються мускули в тілі і стоїть питання як переключити дихання людини і як ну розслабити ці мускули, які за кулак людина зжала, чи ще якось. So if you run across yourself or someone else whose muscles are tight and you tell them to relax the muscles sometimes don't know how to unlock знаєте ви можете бачити людину в якої зажаті руки в кулаки яка вся така скомкана вбита в кулак і якщо ви просто їй скажете розслабся то це ще не означає що вона буде знати як розслабитися її so the thinking part of the brain has to tell the automatic part of the brain what to do тому що як це мусить відбутися, думаюча частина розуму повинна сказати в автоматичній частині розуму, як це зробити. So, um, the automatic brain can understand tense your muscles tighter, then make them relax. Tense them tighter? Yeah. You tense them tighter first, then they can relax. Sometimes they can't unlock because they're at this Why tension. Що заклинила людина, в людині, в людині просто заклинило в якомусь такому стані. Тому зазвичай, щоб людина змогла, щоб ці мускули могло відпустити, треба спочатку їх стиснути чуть сильніше ще. And people that are in chronic stress often clinch and they sleep like this too. І люди, які в хронічному стресі, вони навіть під час свого сну не можуть розслабитися. And so if you see somebody that is like in a in this forward bent position and, and they're tense, you can Go ahead and clench your fist. You can, as you shake your hands, you can just help them as you're talking to them, just un, un uh, clench their hands. That's uh, something you can do in a certain situation. Каже, в деякі ситуації can... можна використати просте рукопожаття, щоб людину просто роз, розкрити ладонь і... What if you just, uh, you don't need to grab like the side of the table like that? <laughs> and let go. Yeah. Squeeze harder, yeah. then let go. Well, you, you and then relax. said like that for 15 minutes. Well, you don't... <laughs> what, what, is, what is that sign? Well, that, what's that? What, what is the sign of that? What, what can you tell about the person who is doing that? Well, they're chronically stressed, and they can't unlock from it. What if you don't want them to unstress? Or they really like table. If you don't table. want them to unstress, then you... You're talking about Putin right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, his, that's his last uh, interview. Let him grip. Uh, interview with his Minister of Defense. He was sitting like that for like 20, 12 minutes. Okay. Well, um... <laughs> You don't have to have the same outcome. <laughs> that, that's a good. Uh, that's a good point. But you can see how stress can affect them. You know, and that that's a reflection of what's happening inside a, a person too. Каже, що це зовні тіло людини відображає часто те, що відбувається внутрі So this is another personal control that you can use in certain circumstances. Not, not just the arms, but also if someone's up with their shoulders high, you can say your muscle, your shoulders look really tense. Try this, tighten them up, and then make them relax more. Then they have a, a way of uh, unlocking. То ви вона повинна зробити це осмислено. Ви можете їй це сказати, що гей, ти, ти напружений дуже чи напружена. Тоді вони піднімають плечі ще вище, і оцей мовшен з'являється в них, і вони оцей момент можуть розслабити їх. And here's another thing that if you have to do a lot of gripping and holding, um, is you can hold your hands like this, hold your hands like this. Ну, поставте руку так. Stretch your fingers like you're trying to stretch your fingers out through the skin, and then relax. Do that again, and then relax. Now you can feel the palms of your hands get a little warm. Do it again, go hard, and then relax. What happens is it stretches the little muscles in the fingers and, and uh, increases the circulation in the arms because when someone's in chronic stress, their hands and fingers get um, cold because the blood's going to the big muscles. Mm-hmm. 
Crow puts an eye on the so he can see what you watch. You may find yourself clenching like this at night if you've had a stressful day. Ви можете навіть звернути увагу, що коли якщо у вас був дуже стресовий день, то вночі ви можете знайти себе в спите, просипається і там жати кулак, наприклад, або щось таке мороє. Recognize that that doesn't serve you very well, and you can just un unloosen. Ви ви розумієте, що це не 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 добре для людей, що в такому стані буде, тому треба якось розслабити тую тую мускул, який застряв. Ми ми дружини, вона жалілася, що два тижні вона прокидалася, коли у неї стиснуті щели по сильно кожен тиск. Uh, he's talking about his wife that she complained that for the period of two weeks she was waking up during the night and she felt like a, a super stressed cheeks blood here like jaws jaws yeah jaws there's two things you can do for that uh, in addition to what i'm telling you one is there are muscles here and muscles here that get really tight when a person clenches a lot and so you can take your hand and roll them around here on the tight part of the cheeks and also the tight part of the temples. And you can also use heat that that helps on on uh, relax the muscle a little bit. Оці оці дві два мускули вони відповідають якби тут і тут за те, що коли людина просто заклинює е якби щелепа і каже їх можна круговими руками масажувати або навіть можна тепло щось прикласти, воно тоже послаблює. And often if a person is clenching their teeth, they're probably clenching their neck and shoulders too. So <clears throat> there's two kinds of breathing that are helpful for you. One is the belly breathing that we talked about. And then the other is if you can't quiet your mind, what you can do is focus your mind's attention on your breathing. Breathe in, breathe out, and just focus your mind not on what you're thinking about, but just focus your mind on the breathing. Ще одна така техніка є, що коли от людина просто не може перестати думати про щось і дуже сильно, ну, все, що вона бачить, все, що вона думає, це оцей предмет, то можна просто попробувати переключити своє думання на на от на 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 дихання. Як ти дихаєш? Вдих, видих, вдох, видих. And that can help break the cycle of looping thoughts that make you more stressed. І і що це робить? Це просто переключає розум і і забирає розум із із тої причини стресу, яка який до якого він прилипає. So another a way to do that is to Focus on your breathing in and out a few times, and then go to tensing and relaxing different muscles. This is a method called progressive relaxation, and that can be. I can send you something on that too. Це така проста техніка, яка ну вона медична техніка, яка говорить про те, як можна людині вийти із такого стану напруження або спазму. Це перше дихання, а друге це коли ти розробляєш кінцівки свого тіла і до кров починає в них йти. Okay, so now there's sleep. Sleep can be a big issue. So there's three parts to sleep. There's before you go to sleep, there's when you wake up in the night to turn over while you're sleeping, and then there's uh, bef- when you wake up and before you get up. Друга частина це коли ти просипаєшся вночі, щоб перевернутися там з боку на бік і перед тим, як просипаєшся вже там. Okay, so a couple things that can be done before you are going to sleep to help get to sleep would be um, pray. Uh, recall what you're grateful for. Um, do the breathing, whether it be the <coughs> belly breathing or the soft breathing that I was just talking about to help break your minds the cycle of thinking. Каже, людське тіло так цікаво створено, що речі, які допомагають, ну перше це молитва. Коли людина, вона перед сном просто елементарно згадує, за що вона вдячна Богу. Дуже важливо, допомагає дуже сну. І друге, от якщо людина помолилася, наприклад, коли ти 
пару буквально хвилин провів оцей такий сеанс це велике дихання, чи це животове дихання, чи м'яке дихання, все дуже приємно говорить. Then in, when you're turning over in bed, sometimes you wake up because you're tense or tight or thinking something that is a stressful thought. So in those times, you can unwind your muscles, you can focus on your breathing in order to break that cycle again. Um, напружені, чи може якісь думки переповняють вашу голову, то дуже важливо не просто старатися зразу йти засипати знову, а е, одну, одну із тих технік, про яку ми говорили, можна використати для того, щоб переключити розум, для того, щоб розслабити тіло. And then when you wake up, um, in your self-talk, when you're first waking up, it's, um, you don't always, you don't have control over your first thought. The first thought comes. Коли, you, а, go ahead. І що цікаво, коли ви тільки просипаєте зранку, ви не маєте ніякого контролю над тою першою думкою, яка приходить вам в голову, і ви тільки проснулися. But you do govern your second thought. Але, але ви маєте контроль над другою думкою. So if you know that the first thought is going to come, and the first thought can bring emotions, then that, that changes your chemistry. І що цікаво, що якщо прийшла перша думка, і ця думка така, яка принесла емоції, які просто змінюють навіть хімію твого організму. Say it's a stressful thought. Then, then you can do something else that's a non-stressful thought um, to neutralize that. То ви можете як мінімум привести просто в свій розум думку, щоб нейтралізувати оцю першу думку, якусь думку, яка буде противовагою, яка нейтралізує. So again, giving thanks praying for the day. Наприклад, що це може бути? Це подякувати Богу, помолитися за день. Um, re- recalling what you're grateful for. Uh, recalling pleasant memories. І привести, ви ти можеш просто елементарно в голові якусь приємну згадку, просто возобновити якусь дійсно хорошу, приємну згадку із свого життя. All of these things can switch your body uh, into a healthier state and help you get more out of sleep. І що цікаво, що така елементарна простенька техніка, про яку ми говоримо, вона вплине на твій день і на твоє загальне здоров'я в цьому дні. Um, this particular technique I've used in my practice with uh, people that have suffered loss and uh, one told me sleep is not a friend of mine. І uh, я не раз служив людям, які загубили дуже близьких людей, і вони казали, що ну, сон це не є мій друг. So techniques like this can be very helpful even in those circumstances. І навіть в таких ситуаціях ця техніка, про яку зараз я казав, вона була, вона допомагала людям. Now, she may need um, professional help to get to the root of the the reasons that she's not being able to sleep, but that's not your job. Може, може ця людина нуждається в якійсь додатковій допомозі, чому вона не може спати. Я не кажу, що це все вирішить. Yours is for yourself and others to to un- just to know that these tools are there and then to use them when they're appropriate for you. Але ми даємо людям таке розуміння, що такий інструмент є і не треба користуватися. So early on um, uh, in the conflict, Dr. Voos said that there are people standing for 18 hours on trains trying to go to a camp. Наприклад, коли почався тій конфлікт України і Росії, то доктор Вус Дуне мені говорив, що люди 18 годин стоять на, на залізничній станції, щоб, ну, щоб сісти на поїзд. So, let's all stand up, and I'll show you that there are, <coughs> there are ways... Станемо. Huh? Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. There are ways that you can stand better and healthier than other ways. Давайте я зараз, знаєте, що скажу, що є такий спосіб стояти просто, який кращий, ніж інший спосіб стояти. So, come over here. So most people when they stand, they stand with their feet close together like this, like he is. Right? That's, that's how we're, we're conditioned to stand. This uh, is unstable, especially in a train, because I can drop him off. Now, if you, I can knock him off his feet, and if you're standing on a train, it's uh, very unsteady. So you can move your feet apart. Але ви можете трохи ширше ноги. Which moves the pressures from your back muscles to your hip socket. І що цікаво, що якщо ви отак ноги ставите ширше, то тиск, який йде із 
отут за спине, ну, с преше по мене. Back muscles. Задни от седмя, переноси се сюди на передни, от сюди на цих мускули. You're much stronger here than you are here. Сега набагато се ниши ваши мускули, ниш от цих. Neurologically, this is a more powerful position. Неврологии, то це набагато се ниша позиция. So, you see, he's much more stable. And it has a different feeling to it. You know, you go and put your feet together and stand there for a while, you waver and you're unsteady and your brain has a whole different level of activity. It's enormously exhausting for the body. Here's one thing, all right? Another thing is, even in a good posture, pressure's built in the body. Навіть якщо ви добру осанку маєте, то все рівно тиск він якби накопичується в тілі. So, any way you can move your feet, you change where pressure accumulates in your body. Кожен раз, коли ви міняєте позицію однієї ноги, ви змінюєте, як розподіляється тиск в вашому тілі. So, you can stagger your feet. Ви можете поставити їх трошки так нерівномірно. And maybe a little wider than that. There you go. Bend the knee, then the other knee. Згнути коліно, згнути коліно. I call this the stand stance. Standing dance. If you let pressure accumulate in one spot, it um, takes up more energy in your body, sends pain signals to the brain, and especially for long periods of time, as it tells you. Standing like this um, the, in, in the brain is a, is a more powerful, confident uh, position to be standing. So something as simple as standing can be helpful, healthy. What, or, or unhealthy, depending on how you do it. And now you see there are a lot of simple things that can be done, a lot of them, that combined together are very powerful, like strands of a string turning into a rope. And, <coughs> So sitting is another is another thing, and sitting for long periods of time is also as 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 exhausting as standing for. You can see standing sitting for long. Sedite, if we sit a long time period of time, then that is also can be as exhausting as standing for long periods of time. So the most common position for sitting is this right here. Oh, then I now, as you can see, the most common position is the position where people sit. So sitting like this, or standing like this, lessens the capacity of your lungs to breathe in air. Which reduces oxygen in your body and circulation in your body. So go ahead and slump, go ahead. And take a big breath in. Now go ahead and sit up, and then take a big breath in. So what you you can breathe in as much as forty percent more oxygen by changing your body position. We must take as many as many as we can to the body. We must take a few more percent of oxygen. Taking a few deep breaths also increases the circulation throughout the entire body. Part of the body and oxygen. As many as the circulation of your body. And it takes time, so shifting positions is still very good, you know, from I this to this, but you have to be able to do this more than, than what you've been. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's standing and sitting. Now, um, how to get most from eating during times of stress? Uh, I encountered this with another Ukrainian patient. She said that um, one friend she went to in high school um, uh, she was talking with her connecting with her on, a, on the app and, and the, the, the ladies the girl said I'm just nauseous all the time I'm so nauseous I can't eat 
I eat, I throw up. And so um, that is part of, all of these things could be helpful for her. Um, and then another thing came up, and then, a, and then another uh, uh, person said, well, they, uh, a, a gentleman that they knew in the neighborhood, their, their, her parents were talking about this, that uh, he was walking around uh, not knowing if he was hungry or not. So he was in a tunnel vision effect, chronic fight, flight, flee, freeze, but then when he ate, he was able to um, uh, come to his senses a little bit better, but he was in chronic shock. And so, so, so like eating eat was like a defense reaction for him? Yeah, yeah, an extended stress reaction. He, he, he wasn't connected with his, he wasn't aware of what was happening because he was in chronic uh, tunnel vision. Як стрес реліф, як як просто щоб вийти від цього стану стресового слова. So when food supplies are are um, tough to come by, and you have food in front of you, um, it may not be the healthiest food, but you have to eat it. So how can you make it the healthiest for you? Буває так, що коли може не хватка і десь, коли людина от втікає від таких зон війни. І перед тобою може бути їжа, і вона може навіть бути не дуже смачна, це не дуже здорова. І як з цієї їжі, щоб вона принесла користь? So what they can do is they can, uh, if, they're, if they're alone, is they can pray over their food and bless their food. Because that switches them from um, the reverence of that, switches them from the stressed situation to the um, uh, parasympathetic or the, the green system which it promotes digestion so even if you eat perfect food and you're stressed you can't get as much out of it as if your body's ready to digest it we trust yes we trust God he says that when a person is under stress then this system that works with food is very strong and it seems that it's need to eat a lot і каже, що один із моментів, що якщо ви, наприклад, помолилися за їжу, з медичної, звичайно, він зараз, ми то знаємо, що і духовну сторону, але медична сторона зараз, він каже, що це якби ти відключив від автоматичного цього мислення і включив, виключився від цього стресу. І не просто, що ти помолився, а навіть така дія, вона вплинула на твою систему перетравлення їжі позитивно. So <clears throat> you can help somebody uh, pray while they're eating before eating, and you don't have to explain all of this. What you all you what is important for you to know is that it will help them. Not just the not just the the, the miracles that God bestows upon us for the, the blessing of being able to uh, blessing the food, but also the body switches. And able to receive it better. Ми говоримо не просто, що коли ми молимося, то ми благословляємо їжу, і їжа ну благословенна боспячується, так а ми говоримо, що наше тіло у цієї молитви сприймає їжу краще. Оця сторона. So people mirror the expressions of others and emotions of others. Ми вже говорили, що люди вони якби повторяють міміку і емоції ті, котрі направляються до них в їхню сторону. And if you are strong and uh, confident in the situation you're in um, and can give facial expressions when appropriate, then they can pick up on that and it changes their chemistry and their uh, body. But uh, <coughs> Впливає на другу людину, коли вона усміхається у відповідь, оця дія, вона впливає на хімію, на, на процеси фізичні в організмі цієї другої людини. And that way you can be a leader in many ways. І таким чином ти стаєш лідером, ти ну, якби цими маленькими речами підштовхуєш людину до правильних, правильних дій. And now you know also that you're susceptible to picking up uh, the mirroring of others towards you, I mean, not towards you, but in, uh, in your environment. 
це є, як би сказати, уязвимий, є така спокуса, щоб прийняти негативну реакцію другої людини, яка тобі посилається. So you need to arm yourself with these methods to help yourself, so then you can help others. Тому пам'ятайте про це і маєте таку огороду, ограду, щоб не приймати чогось негативно, яким може посилатися вам. So, Oleg, when we were before the meeting, you, I asked, well, you made a comment that what we do is, or what's done is we pray for them, and uh, love them, and care for them. Перед, перед зустрічю Олег сказав, що що наші місіонери зазвичай роблять з людьми, як вони служать. Це просто стараються потішити їх, стараються допомогти і помолитися, якщо можливо. Which is great. І це чудово. But now you can take that in a few additional ways to help yourself and others even more. Але тепер можете навіть застосувати те, що ми сьогодні говорили, щоб допомагати людям навіть на практичному рівні маленькими такими кроками. Okay, go to the next slide. Now I shared with you, okay, that's, we've already been through that. So we go to the next slide. <clears throat> so I shared a lot of information with you tonight uh, in a short amount of time. And uh, uh, it's important to um, be able to absorb it, use it yourself, and then use it with others. Um, and I want to know how to be helpful to you in order to make that happen. What do you need to remember and be able to review this information? Yeah, like uh, what, yeah. what can I provide you that would uh, give you, that would, all of these things, that these techniques are written in a, in a uh, outline, like you, like you have in your yeah. manual. Okay. I have a manual, and all it does too, of all the materials. Uh, and so you can refer to any of those techniques and read about it in a page. Uh, very simple to do, and uh, you can recall if, if that's helpful for you. Uh, we, we can, we can uh, that, that Paul that they gave me, uh -huh. the binder that they gave me, we can make, I can make copies of the slides. I can also turn that into a PDF. Yeah. Would you like that? Uh, or would you like PDF that? PDF is, you know, fine. Okay. Yes, we can so the, email each other. So the PDF will have a, a, a number of documents in it and a table of contents. And then if we go back to the, uh, uh, the techniques, all of those will have a page number and you can review it. Would that be helpful? Yes. Yeah, that would be good. Okay, and um, yeah, how do you, how, how, what's the best way to remember what we talked about tonight so you could share it with others? <coughs> Any thoughts on that? <coughs> can you show some real field example or tell us real field example that person was under distress, like a real time story? Uh -huh. that maybe you would implement with example. Okay. So, um, real time, okay. No, something that actually happened, not not created, you know, not to create the scenario. But like what I did, uh, what I talked about with my patients? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, would little, Little videos, like two minute YouTube videos, be helpful? I, th I think maybe a simple story just from simple your personal story? experience that you like. I met this person, she, her name was blah blah blah. Uh, she was this so way. So you can see how it was used yep. in the, how like you the, like one of the camps yep. or whatever. Okay. More, more like your testimonials, because you know, a lot, yep. of, a lot of times, you know, people. <laughs> but but it's, it's, uh, it's, I, up, it's up to you, I just say. I would say one of the things is uh, uh, to me, if I can say that, like for example, breathing technique. That's a good, good stuff. You want to say something, you just make a pause. <laughs> Maybe you won't say it. Uh -huh. <laughs> like there you use your thinking brain. <laughs> yeah. you use the thinking brain for a second. No, you use your... You're not going to say it. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, teaching people, because, you know, we deal with people, uh, you know, different people in teaching, teaching people, uh, how to help, you know, you, you, you say it from medical point of view, and so there's like two sides, one spiritual side, one is medical side, it's like it's spiritual side, you pray, you're thankful, you feel like the peace comes, you know, you, you, you're mm -hmm. in a state of peace. But the other part of it is, that, is what's happening physically in, in our body. It's very consistent. Very consistent. And what ha what's happening physically, you know, our heartbeat comes, slows down, 
process slowed down, so you get into that mode that you can actually fall asleep. And, and now you have the power to be able to use that even better, I hope. You know, because most of the time, I, I, for some reason, I don't know why, if there are so many people that have problems sleeping, I, I never realize it, because in my life, it doesn't take me long to fall asleep. I, I, I fall asleep like, yeah. Literally, I and everywhere. <laughs> you know, sometimes yeah. it's even embarrassing. But anyway, uh, <laughs> the, the the thing is that people can fall asleep, and I was I had a hard time understanding that. And the guys were coming coming up with this myth that if you overwork yourselves, and I remember my brother, my own brother too, and that's how he became like a workaholic. He he, he didn't he couldn't sleep. So he had really, real trouble to fall asleep. He said, well, maybe if I work like 18 hours, to where I'm just and like exhausted. fall exhausted to the point. And the, the funny thing was, yeah, when he was that exhausted, he couldn't fall asleep. Because, well, the, the, still because the body was stuck, stuck. In, yeah. in the stress mode. So that's like a, a, a practical thing that, you know, overworking, just push, push an accelerator, <coughs> like you were saying, it's not always this, this uh, it's not a good role to to, uh, to peace, mm -hmm. you know, relaxation of the body and peace of the soul. Mm -hmm. So th th those are connected. Yeah. And rather switching. And I like that that uh, that uh, uh, guidance, that instruction that we have the front mind that we can use it. And as as Christians, how we use it? Yeah, we start memorizing, you know, mercies of God. We start we start praying. We start uh, memorizing the promises. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that uh, that uh, uh, brings us comfort and peace. And those are things to think about when your mind is looping in a stressful thought pattern too. In a, in addition to uh, the, the the quiet breathing, recalling uh, what your teachings are. Yeah. Yeah. So, <clears throat> how can we get your feedback? Like, how can I get your feedback? On? I have one thought, and that is, would you each text Oleg, you all have Oleg's cell number? Could you each text in one sentence about the mic? Sure. One sentence. Yes. All right. Well, that actually, I trust you, should not tell him it. Not text me, I am not sure. I want to just know that we are thinking, that we have a good use for this, that we are doing it. So I, I know this is a lot, uh, and, and you. Um, takes a while to think about it, you know. And so uh, um, I'm very interested in knowing what ways to make the information better because our hope is, is with the Mental Wellness Society is to uh, uh, have some type of training that's recorded for volunteers, no matter what uh, community that they're in, in the US or elsewhere in the world that are gonna be volunteers can do for preparedness training. So what, anything that, that you can, that, um, um, recommend that would make our time together more productive for you um, and helpful, then I want to know that. When I work in the wellness society, one of the approaches is to use this with volunteers, with people who are willing to use it, 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 які для людей, котрі не, не науковці, просто прості люди, котрі от їдуть кудись, і вони ну не, не you know what would be helpful to us for us to know. Maybe if you can take five minutes and, and touch. How would you say, for example, I'm at the terrible stress, I lost the loved person. I'm crying, I don't want to live, I, you know, I don't want to know nothing. I'm in that terrible stress. At, the, at its extreme, uh -huh. and Nick is trying to serve me. What would you recommend to Nick? How how he should approach that from the point of view uh, of? That's a great question, and there are a couple of documents in here from the Israeli Trauma Coalition that uh, address that. Yeah, One I is was, sorry, what, I was the, that situation in Poland, and I didn't know what Nick had to say. Well, <clears throat> um, sometimes it's important to let them vent a certain amount uh, they because they need to they need uh, uh, someone there to be able to, to to vent but but then you also can look at other things that are happening in their body and uh, see if there's a way that uh, 
we can say, uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, uh, let me help your muscles relax a little bit or stretch your hands out and relax a little bit to make things a little better uh, to get them out of the out of that cycle. You can raise your finger, praise your finger. Uh, would be would be helpful um, in that particular moment, but uh, uh, not to interrupt them uh, unless, unless they are looping. Then it's, it's important for them to let, let them say something. Else. I can uh, I can actually uh, um, write a, another that would be a good a good thing to write about uh, to, a little paragraph and I'll send it to you. Yeah, what would be yeah, that would be helpful. What would be a good response, uh, first response from the volunteer that that is ministering to a person like that. I want to say, if you ask such a question, it might be helpful to know our reality more. We 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 just want to ask it, so we understand, right? When it's for us, the person who is so angry, angry, and is crying, and nothing helps, what can we do? How can we help that person? How to talk to children? Can we show children in the camps too? Yes. Yes, a lot of children. How to talk to children? Yeah. And so there's a there's a two page one in here about talking to children, how to and how not to. И мають на увазі не просто діти говорять слідти, а з дітьми, котрі якраз пережили стрес. Це тоже пережили якусь. Як з ними говорити, що можна говорити, що не можна говорити там. Може ви що маєте ще?